Today, I'm gonna to show you how to edit your raw images in Photoshop. Hey there, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. And in today's episode, we're bringing in a raw image. That's right. Raw photos are the highest quality images you can possibly take from modern digital cameras. And if you're not shooting raw currently, I highly recommend doing so because you can make changes like your white balance and exposure very easily. And these images contain a lot more information. So your end product after editing is going to be much higher quality. Photoshop has a program built into it called Adobe Camera Raw that you can use to edit raw photos. Now, the same exact program exists in Adobe Bridge and in Adobe Lightroom. So if you've used either of those, this is gonna seem very familiar. Now, Adobe Camera Raw, it's a pretty big program within Photoshop, so we're not gonna go over everything, but we will cover the essentials. We got a great tutorial for you. Let's jump into Photoshop. So let's start off by opening up our raw image. Now you can actually download this on flurn.com. Just follow the link right down below. So anytime you're opening up a raw image in Photoshop, it first goes through Adobe Camera Raw. And this is what we see here. Now we've got sliders for things like our color temperature where you can make your image warmer or a little bit cooler. And let's say you shoot with the right or shoot with incorrect white balance. Like maybe you shot with tungsten accidentally it's actually incredibly simple to fix it. You can just simply change your color slider, or if you know it was a sunny day, like you can just go to daylight and it's gonna choose really nice white balance for your daylight. Now I took this picture about a month ago. I went apple picking in an orchard uh, up in Michigan. It was a really, really good time. And I wanna edit this here in Adobe Camera Raw. So we have adjustments for our temperature as well as tint, but provided you choose the white, white, correct white balance, you won't really need to adjust that. Now we can also choose to bring our exposure up and down. This is kind of like a, it's a, like a bright sunny image. So I do want to make it a little bit brighter and I want to bring my shadow levels up as well. Now, the other thing that I'm seeing is a little bit of uh, vignetting. See how the edges just look a little bit dark. So I'm going to go to my lens corrections. We're going to go ahead and say, enable our profile corrections. And what this does is I'll actually figure out what camera and lens you're using and it'll act, it'll fix distortion and vignetting. So in this case, you can see I was using a Sony 16 to 35 millimeter lens on a Sony camera. There we go. Now, in this case, because it fixed that, I don't think we actually need our exposure adjustments. So let's go ahead and bring that back down to zero. And that looks pretty good. Now, we also maybe we just wanna add a little bit more color. So I'm gonna take my vibrant slider and crank this up. After all, it is like ah, picking an apple right in the sunlight. Fantastic. And let's go ahead and bring our black levels up. Now, the thing I love about this program is it's extremely visual. You just have basically a bunch of sliders and you see exactly what you get. So exposure up or down, it's very easy to make decisions here. And there's not a lot hidden in menus, but we do have a couple different options right up here at the top. So we can edit our tone curve, which is very similar to the curves in Photoshop. Here we can see detail like sharpening, our hue saturation adjustment, uh, for instance, if we want to make the uh, saturation of just our greens, we could increase or decrease that. And let's go ahead, we'll do the reds. Maybe we'll increase the luminance of our reds as well, because we've got some red apples there. Fantastic. And here we can see things like split toning for, you know, like color toning, where we could add a, a color into our highlights and another color into our shadows for like artistic effects. Uh, we're not going to do that. So we'll just bring those back down to zero. We saw our lens corrections, you can add grain, you can calibrate, which honestly really don't need to do that. You have presets that you can save and different snapshots during your edit. But most of the edit, it's just gonna be right here in the basic tools. Now, the other things worth paying attention are your tools up here at the top. You have things like your zoom tool, hand for moving around, your white balance. So if you shoot with a gray card, you can just have a picture of your gray card in there, choose the white balance from your gray card, which is nice, but if you didn't do it, Again, you can just choose the white balance that's closest to the lighting conditions you actually shot in, okay? And then we have tools like cropping and straightening and things like that, but these tools here at the end, these are actually pretty useful. So we have our adjustment brush, the graduated filter, and the radio filter. Now what these do is allow you to edit just certain areas of your photos because everything else here, like exposure, this is editing everything, right? But let's say I wanna add a little bit more glow right here where the light is kinda of coming in. So I'm gonna choose a radial adjustment or radio filter. Now we're gonna just click and drag out and you can see I'm able to see this in, in real time. Now, 
I'm gonna just crank up my exposure. We're going to the right a little bit. I can change this at any time. So I'm not I'm not stuck with, you know, how this looks. I can make it larger or smaller. At this point, it's actually the opposite of what, what, what I want, right? I wanna, <laughs> I wanna adjust inside of the circle, not outside of the circle. So we're gonna scroll right down here and where it says effect. Right now it's clicked on outside, we'll just click on inside. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and feather this more, you know, less feathering is gonna be more obvious. I like to include quite a bit of feathering to make it, you know, less obvious that, hey, you did this in post-production. There we go, we'll go ahead and bring this in there. And now, obviously I cranked up my exposure, but that was mostly to show you what we're doing. We know which area we're going to affect and we can start actually making some changes. So I'm gonna bring up my color temperature a little bit. Maybe we're gonna bring up our saturation a little bit. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna kind of enhance that sunlight. So I'm, I'm really just making choices to like draw the user right into this area. All right, so by bringing up our color temperature, exposure, and then actually really everything looks pretty good. You could add a little bit of texture and a little bit of clarity, which basically sharpens that area. So you'll, your subject will wind up looking there. So we're done with that. We can just go ahead and click right back to the hand tool and it'll apply that transformation. Now let's click right down here. You're gonna be able to see our before and after. So here's the before and the after. This is with no editing straight out of camera. And here's the after. You can see it's much more warm and we have a clear focus right here in the center. Now, I wanna do one more thing. Let's go ahead and switch between our before and after views to just see the after again. I wanna darken up the left side of the image just a little bit, and that should help draw the eye right into the center there. So for this, what we're gonna choose is our graduated filter. We're gonna click and drag from the left to the right. You can see it's set to lighten things up, all right? So let's go ahead and bring this back down to zero. All right, we'll take all of our values here and just bring everything to zero. And now we're just gonna bring our exposure down just a tiny bit which I know is kind of like, <laughs> we fought this earlier with our lens correction and now I'm adding a little bit of vignetting back. But in this case, we're doing it for a reason. I really want the viewer to focus in on this area. All right, and that looks pretty good. So really easy to see. We have some options for turning on a mask. If you wanna see what actually gets affected, you can turn your overlay off and on. But these tools right up here, so the brush, that just basically allows you to paint where you're gonna affect. Uh, graduated filter is the one we're using right now. So it's gonna be like opaque to transparent. And then the radial filter will do the same thing in a radius. So those tools are incredibly helpful. So let's go ahead into our last one, our little adjustment brush here. And this one, we're actually just gonna paint. You can use your open and close brackets to make your brush larger and smaller. You can adjust things like your feathering here as well. There we are. And I'm gonna paint right over top of our little red apple, just the apple. Now again, you can click on this little mask icon that'll show you where you've painted. You can even click here and change the color of your mask if you want to. There we go. Let's go ahead and turn that mask off. And then what we're gonna do is just bring our saturation up. So I can say like, ooh, this red apple, let's, like, let's make it really saturated. And if you need to subtract anywhere from your, where you painted, you can just hold Alt or Option and then paint. So let's hold Alt or Option. I'm just gonna bring the size a little smaller. There we go, just subtract from that area. All right, and then we'll just paint on here, which bring up the saturation on those guys as well. Fantastic, so let's go ahead and see our before and after. Just click on this little Y right down here. Now you can zoom in here if you hold Control or Command and click a couple times, you can zoom in. So really easy to see the before and after there. If you hold Alt or Option, you can zoom back out. And we have a few different options for how we view our before and after. There we go. And there's just the after again. And then of course, down here on the bottom, you can zoom in and out to your image. You could say, hey, show me at 50% what it looks like, or we can go back to fit and view. Now there's one more important thing to do in this menu, and that's right down here on the very bottom. Let's go ahead and click that. I highly recommend a couple things. First, your color space Adobe RGB, that's fantastic. It's a wide color space, so you'll have a lot of room for editing in Photoshop. Second, because we're working with a raw image to start with, a raw image is 16 bit. So I wanna preserve that bit depth in Photoshop because it gives me more information to work with. So my depth here, let's choose 16 bits per channel. And then the last one I suggest is clicking open this in uh, Photoshop as a smart object. That way we can get back to camera raw if we need to. If this is not checked, you won't be able to get back here. So let's hit okay. 
there we go, and hit open object. So as long as it says open object, you're good to go. So all you do is you know hit open object, and then boom, in just a second, everything looks like, ah, this is the Photoshop that I know and love. But I've taken a raw photograph and applied a lot of editing before it even came into Photoshop, which is fantastic. Now, check this out. If I wanna get back into Adobe Camera Raw, like if I wanna change my white balance or whatever, just double click right here on this thumbnail, boom, and you're back in Adobe Camera Raw, and here I could continue to adjust things like my color temperature if I wanted to do that. All right, just hit OK, and it'll apply all of those adjustments right back here again. So you can do a ton of your editing in Adobe Camera Raw before you even bring it into Photoshop. And again, I do want to say, if you're a Lightroom user or a Bridge user, you have access to all these same tools in those programs as well. So if that's a part of your workflow currently, that's fantastic. You don't have to change your workflow. But if you don't have those programs or have never used them or haven't had any experience editing raw photos, it's good to know that you can bring them directly into Photoshop. Adobe Camera Raw is a full featured raw editor. It does a fantastic job. And then you can bring your images right into Photoshop for further editing. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. I hope you're enjoying this 30 days of Photoshop. I know I'm having an absolute blast. You can sign up, uh, by the way, completely for free. Just follow the link right down below. You get all the sample images so you can follow along. You get PSDs, you get a, even a calendar with every single one of the days so you can kind of like schedule your little plan around it. You'll get follow-up emails and bonus extras that are only available as a part of this series. And did I mention it's absolutely free? So pretty awesome thing. I think I'll sign up for it, even though I'm, <laughs> I'm making it. Thank you so much. I'll learn you later. Bye everyone.